What's up everybody, it's me Bryson Booker and I have another pro audio review just for you. And today I'm going to be reviewing another powered mixer. And this one is from PV. The first one I reviewed was from SoundTech and that was a pretty decent powered mixer, the SoundTech MM6. But I have to say that that SoundTech wasn't as, I guess you could say, prominent or in the mainstream as these PV XR powered mixers. And that's what this one is. Uh, the PV XR series of, of powered mixers basically started back, I don't know, I think around the late 70s and are still a part of PV's lineup today. And so basically from the late 70s on, PV kept releasing different incarnations of these XR series powered mixers. Um, and this incarnation which came out around the late 90s early 2000s me personally I think is their best incarnation yet uh, they stuffed a lot of great features and a pretty good power amp rating as well as a pretty good sound quality and just a complete compact package that you can literally take to any gig and use with any type of speakers and it'll sound pretty good so again this is a powered mixer and this is the XR684F. They also made an XR, I think, 624. It was a model under this that provided more, or a model over this, I'm sorry. But this provides uh, 200 watts times 2. So you get 400 watts. Uh, but that's if you use the unit in stereo. But um, you can also divide the power if you were running mains. You could run mains from this. From power amp one and then you can run your monitors from power amp two so there are two count them two power amps in this unit um, and that that's where the two times 200 watts comes from one power amp has 200 watts the other power amp has 200 watts in total you get 400 watts so that's where that comes from the model above this um, I believe had more channels and gave you I think 600 watts so it would be 300 watts times two so that would equal 600 watts uh, but this is the model under it the XR 684 F uh, the F I'm guessing stands for the feedback ferret which is included here on the powered mixer but guys this is a fully featured powered mixer sends plenty of power to your speakers uh, you plug the speakers up on the in the back of the unit which I'll show you in a second uh, but let's let's just go through the channels here and uh, discuss all the features here so the first thing up here you can't really see it that well but you have a low cut uh, filter this low cut filter our high pass filter is set at 80 Hertz and it's for channels 1 through 6 only so channel 7 and 8 which are the stereo channels don't get the low cut filter you only get the low cut on channels 1 through 6 on channel 1 you have an effects knob because built in on this unit you have an effects unit which we'll get to again in a second you have your three band EQ your highs are set at 12 kilohertz your mids are set at 1k so that's kind of a high mid so kind of sort of kind of high mid low mid I don't know why they would put 1k on this mixer I guess to make it a bit warmer which it does make it a bit warmer but it kind of sounds a bit muffled, so you end up cutting it anyway. But there you go. For the mids, you got 1K. And for the bass, you have 70 hertz. And then you have your gain right here. The white knob is your gain. I like how PV color-coded each of these sections so you know which section is for what. So obviously the top knob is your effects. Your black knob's EQ. There's another blue knob right here, and that controls your monitor. And then your white knob is obviously your gain for your mains. On the first two channels, they give you patching. Basically, these are insert jacks, guys. So that's actually pretty cool, but I don't think a lot of people probably even used them. But basically, what that allows you to do is on channels 1 and 2, let's say you have a vocal on channel 1 and 2, you can basically insert a compressor on channel 1 with an insert cable of course or you know if you had a bass guitar you can insert that compressor on channel 2 or a gate or another effects unit you know an external effects unit you could put 
uh, basically an insert into these inputs. Then you have a line input and then your microphone input. Oh, you also have a 25 dB pad switch. And that's actually pretty cool uh, because many powered mixers in this category did not have a pad. They had a low cut. Some of them had a low cut. Uh, the lucky ones had a low cut. But many of them did not have a pad. PV gave you a pad. So if you were plugging a bass guitar line directly into this, you could attenuate the signal 25 dB so that you know a bass guitar can be really hot sometimes especially if you don't have it running through a DI box same thing with keyboards you know they can be really hot if you don't have something to kind of limit that signal a little bit well PV was nice enough to give you a pad right there to handle those hot signals you know another use for this is it's pretty much the reason why I'm using it I'm using another mixer um, this is just being used to power speakers and so I'm plugging my mixer in here, you know, and then this is going out to the speakers. So you could use it that way too. That's where the pad will come in handy because obviously my mixer is already going to be giving a lot of hot signal to this. And i got to attenuate some of that. So that's why I'm going to be using this because it has the pad on it. And then again, microphone inputs. Same thing for channels 2, 3, well, 2 has the insert. 3, 4, 5, and 6 don't have inserts but they do have pads. Seven and eight are stereo, your stereo inputs. So basically the same thing, you got the effects, you got your EQ, you have your monitor send, and then you have your mains send. And then obviously your stereo jacks. Then you have a tape return on here, you got your stereo aux channel for channel nine. So this is channel nine right here, so this is just basically a stereo input for your CD player, tape player, or MP3. You got a two-band EQ, highs and lows. You have a monitor output to send it to your monitor, and then your main output to send it to your mains. So all, obviously all of this is is just a line in for your CD player. You also have a record out, so you can send your mix to a tape recorder or CD recorder. Coming to the master section over here, you'll have your 49-bit digital effects. So PV was nice enough to give you a built-in effects processor right here. So you got some reverbs, you got some spring reverbs, mainly these are just reverbs and delays. I can't remember how good these actually are. I haven't really used them in a long time, but we'll see if we can get them to work today. Effects levels. So you can send the effects to your monitor or you can send it to your main. Simple. Feedback ferret. The feedback ferret is actually a pretty innovative feature on here. And so what this allows you to do is basically control the feedback uh, from your mains or monitors. Um, and it actually depends on where you set the power amp. So if you have the power amp where it's set now, where it's going to be one side is doing mains, the other side is doing monitors, your feedback ferret will send one, side, one of them to do the mains and one to do the monitors. If you were running the mixer in stereo, where both amp channels will be powering mains, the feedback ferret would probably go to both of those left and the, both in the, the left and right outputs. So feedback ferret again is a great innovative and award-winning PV tool that allows you to control feedback. Uh, I haven't personally used it. Um, it's decent for what it could do. I wouldn't say that it's a miracle worker, but you know it's pretty much it tries to be you know something handy that is you know useful of getting rid of feedback but obviously if you position your microphones correctly and if you stand behind the speakers this <laughs> just you can probably avoid most of the feedback that you'll get and obviously if you don't do stupid stuff with this EQ because obviously this EQ is not that great you know you can avoid feedback easily without using feedback ferret but it's there if you want to if you want it DDT this protects your speakers uh, again PV's kind of limiter on your loudspeakers, so the amplifier circuits are connected with this DDT. So if you find that you're pushing your speakers a little harder than they're go, than than uh, are the amplifiers is harder, a little harder than they need to go, that DDT filter will quick kick in and kind of protect the speakers for you. The equalizer assignment. This is actually pretty cool as well. Um, PV did some pretty cool stuff right here. So what you can do with this EQ assignment is you can assign this graphic EQ 
to either your monitor sin, which obviously you do want to do, you want to EQ your monitors, but you could also sign it to channel three of uh, the one of the microphone inputs. So if you had a really crucial vocal that you really needed to EQ, you had to EQ all that feedback, and I mean, this three band EQ can only do so many wonders. It's like, man, your vocalist may still sound like crap. You can come over here to the graphic EQ here and basically take out some more low mids. Or, you know, some people like to boost uh, the presence frequencies, so the highs up here. Or, you know, add a little bit of intelligibility in 2K, you know, to make that vocalist shine through. That's pretty innovative, guys. And so if you don't prefer the 3-band EQ that you get on here, you can add the graphic EQ on your source. And obviously for monitors, you know, you can do use the graphic EQ to tame your feedback. 